Okay, so how about this one? An insulated piston cylinder device contains five liters of saturated liquid water at a constant pressure of 175 kPa. Water stirred by a paddle wheel while a current of eight amps flows through 45 minutes Flows, flows for 45 minutes through a resistor placed in the water. One half of the liquid is evaporated during this constant pressure process, and the paddle will work. Amounts of 400 kilojoules determine the voltage of the source. Okay, a lot of stuff there. A lot of stuff there, but do you see? We, we, we have lots of work, energies. We need to calculate the energy change. We need to find the conservation of energy. All right. Because this is closed, Q plus W equals delta E. Uh, because there's no um, there's no change in potential energy, change in kinetic energy. This is saturated. And this delta E uh, probably either going to be U or H. Remember, go back to that page in our note. Should this be U or should this be H? All right. Well, uh, it is a piston cylinder device, and it says a constant pressure. Most piston cylinder devices are constant pressure devices. If you have some weight that's just sitting on top of your piston cylinder uh, and that weight doesn't change, then yes, this is a constant pressure process. So for constant pressure processes, this, this delta E on the right-hand side is going to be enthalpy, and we don't have to calculate the boundary work. Right? Don't calculate boundary work because that is inside. It's already kind of calculated, included there for us, in the enthalpy, all right? So is there any Q, is there any heat transfer? Well, it says insulated. Generally, insulated actually kind of means uh, that both there's no heat or work, but uh, I think there's definitely some work, you know, things crossing boundaries. But this insulated is trying to tell us that there's no heat transfer. So there's no Q uh, entering or exiting, right? No Q in or out. Uh, is there any work other than boundary work? Uh, yeah, we've got this paddle wheel, right? We've got this paddle wheel. Paddle wheel work is 400 kilojoules. Uh, we also have this electrical work, 8 amps, 45 minutes, this electrical work. All right, and then the right-hand side, this is going to be MH2 minus H1, right? MH2 minus H1, okay? So let, this, is our, this is our road map. You know, this is what's going to lead us through the problem. Uh, so let's let's try to start here. All right, we've got 400 kilojoules kind of put into our system by the paddle wheel. So I'm going to make that as work going in. Uh, so that's a positive 400 going in. Uh, we've we're we're putting a current and voltage through through the water. So that's also going in. Uh, the work done by a uh, voltage. Go back and make sure this is on your formula sheet. Uh, but it's voltage times uh, current times time right there. So this would be a uh, voltage. I think that's that's the main thing that we're looking for, determine the voltage. Um, the current, 8 amps, the time, 45 minutes. Uh, I'd, I'll have to look at our units to see if those work out. Okay. And now here, on the right-hand side, the mass uh, I don't know, but I think I probably have enough information. If I know 5 liters, and I know it's saturated liquid, and I know it's 175 kPa, I bet you that that can give me the, um, the mass. And H2 minus H1, so we really got to think about what's happening at state 1, what's happening at state 2. Okay, so that, that's the main problem. This is the one I don't know. So I need to know everything else, right? Once I plug in everything else right there, I can find the voltage. All right, what do you want to start with? How about the mass? How could we find the mass? They don't tell me the mass. They tell me the volume. But I bet you with the volume and the lowercase v, how can I find the lowercase v? I can find the lowercase v from a saturated liquid water at 175 kPa. So... State one, right? State one. What's happening at state one? The volume, five liters. Uh, it is a saturated liquid. Uh, it is at a pressure of 175 kPa. So from just those two, saturated liquid at that pressure, I can go to table A5 and find the specific volume 
V. All right, so we get A5 for a pressure of 175. So go to our property tables. Go to the pressure table, A5, for a um, pressure of 175 right here. The V uh, liquid, 0 0.001057 right there. 0 0.001057. And then also, how about why not, while we're here, let's go ahead and read off the H. Or the U if we were needing U, but we're going to need H. Um, so 487.01. Now don't forget how to interpolate if this was in between two temperatures. Uh, be sure to interpolate. All right, so let's write those down. The V1 is 0 0.001057 meters cubed per kilogram. The H, whoops, H, at that, at, because it's a saturated liquid, 487.01 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, um, so there, so uh, there, I've got the H right there. So I've got all this. Uh, I just found H1. I don't have mass yet, so yeah, that, that's where we can take that big V, that little V, right, the total volume and the specific volume. Uh, mass would be, this is how I memorize it or, or write this in my formula. Uh, little V equals big V divided by mass, so mass would be big V divided by little V. The units should work out here. Five liters, okay, except five liters, I need to change to meters cubed. Um, that's probably on that conversion factor sheet, but it's a thousand. Th th imagine a cubic meter. Imagine a box that is one meter by one meter by one meter, right? Here we go. Yeah, well, there it is right there. But imagine a box that's one meter by one meter by one meter. How many liters would, could fit in there? 1,000. All right, so let's go right here. So five liters is point, let's see, five liters, or are we, point zero zero five, right? Two zeros, right? Uh, point zero zero five meters cubed divided by point zero zero one oh five seven meters cubed per kilogram. Meters cube cancel out. I've got kilograms in the denominator, in the denominator, which means it's in the numerator. So this would be 1,593.6. No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Reading the wrong line. 4.73 kilograms. 4.73 kilograms. So that's M1, M2. That's a mass for a closed system. So that's just the mass. So I've got that right there. Now, I'm almost there. I need this H2. Once I get that, then I can use this equation to solve for V. What is H2? Well, what do I know is happening at state 2? State 2. All right. It's a piston cylinder. It is at a constant pressure. So P2 is still 125 kPa. Uh, the mass is still 4.73 kilograms. The volume is not uh, 0 0.005 cubic meters anymore. It's a piston cylinder. Imagine a cylinder with something on top of it that's going up and down. The, the volume is changing, so I don't know the volume. Um, what did it say is happening at state two? One half of the liquid is evaporated. So this is, it is, at first it starts as all saturated liquid, but some of it is becoming saturated vapor. How much? One half of it. We can assume this is mass. One half of the mass, right, of the 4.73 kilograms uh, is going from uh, liquid to vapor. That is telling us that it is at a quality of 0.5. That's telling us it's at a quality of 0.5. So X is 0.5. So if you knew that, if you knew the pressure and the quality of 0.5, we could find the H, right? HF plus X, HFG, all at 125. So go to that table, uh, table what, A5, uh, find HF and HFG. 
I'm, I, I've, I've kind of skipped this, but this is 0.5. This, read those off from the property tables. This is where I've got 1593.6 kilojoules per kilogram. There we go. There we go. Now I can find the volume. So now let's get back to that uh, main equation. 400 kilojoules going in. So I put it plus right there. Uh, the voltage will be the voltage times 8 amps, sorry, 8 amps times 45 minutes. All right, but the units would not work out. We could, um, there possibly is on the um, unit conversion website, but what I remember is I know that a volt amp second is a joule. A volt amp second. So if this is in volts, if this is in amps, if this was in seconds, I would be in joules. Let me change 45 minutes to seconds. Uh, convert, so multiply that times 60, right? Seconds, minutes, right? All right, so there we go. I've got volt, amp, seconds. Volt, amp, seconds is a joule. But this is in kilojoules. The right-hand side of my equation is probably going to be kilo kilojoules. If this is in joules, but I want to convert it to kilojoules, divided by 1,000. Divide it by a thousand. So mm, does that make sense? A volt amp second is just a joule, not a kilojoule. A volt amp second is just a joule. So I like to have everything in volt amp seconds, but then that's just joules. If I want kilojoules, divide it by a thousand. Okay, there we go. We've got that. We've got that equals mass of uh, 4.73 H2. 1593.6 minus, it started at 487.01 kilojoules per kilogram. Yeah, that kilojoules on the right hand side, kilojoules right here, kilojoules right here. So then I can just solve for V. V, I've got 223.9 volts. 223.9 volts. Let's take a breath and go back and review what we just did. What did we just do? We saw that it was a, a piston cylinder constant pressure process, so I knew I needed delta H over here. Uh, it was insulated, so, I, so there was no Q. Uh, was there any other work besides boundary work? Yes, there was work by paddle wheel, work by voltage. And so then here's my here's my main equation. And I just kind of had to go around the block to get H1. How did I get H1 from saturated liquid at that pressure? How did I get mass? I got mass from the volume and the, the um, specific volume. And how did I get H2? I got H2 from knowing that it was still at that pressure and half of it was a vapor now. So now it's a mixture with a quality of 0.5. There's its H. And then units, units, units are important. That was a tough one. That was a good one. That was a good one.